If you have a mobile and want to start making games with Godot, you are in the correct place. Imagine not only to be able to create 2D games but also outstanding 3D projects. In this video, we'll go through the step by step to achieve creating this 3D game that is quite simple yet effective to learn. This tutorial is 100% beginner friendly, I will explain everything that I do in detail. Even if you already have some hands on experience, this video will still be a good option to learn more about Godot Mobile. Let's start. The first step is to create a brand new project in Godot, it should be completely empty. So before actually starting, what I wanted to clarify is that I'm mirroring my screen to my uh, PC so that I can properly record it and also I can use my mouse and keyboard. But as you can see, actually I am on a mobile, so you can completely follow this on your mobile phone. Having that considered, let's now create a brand new 3D scene and we will name this base node main, okay? Like this. Now let's save our scene, go into scene, save scene, and now here let's click save. Now we can create some shapes, so let's click here add, and we'll add some mesh instances 3D. Basically mesh instances are the nodes that, that are used in order to create different shapes. So here in the mesh, if we click here, we can see the different shapes that we can create. In this case, I'm just going to create a new sphere mesh. Okay, and as you can see, we have a sphere. Inside of this node, I'm going to add an area. So we are going to be using our area in order to detect our click inside of the object. And this area, as you probably already know, we need a collision shape to define its shape. Okay. So basically, the size of this collision shape will define the how we can uh, make this object interactable so here we'll create a new sphere shape okay and as you can see the size is perfect so basically we could even make this a little bit longer so if we click for example here the area 3d would detect that there has been a click for example there are actually a lot of other events that uh, you can uh, uh, connect uh, with areas okay but in this case we are just gonna be targeting clicking when that is done, let's select our main node and we will attach a script with this button. As you probably know, you can select a template. In this case, let's just go with an empty script so that we don't have any functions, variables, etc. previously created. And here we are. Now let's go to our area 3D and here in node, we are going to look for an event that is called area input event. So it would be right here. Let's click here, connect, and let's click again, connect. So in our script, we have connected our input event signal here, okay? And basically here, there are a lot of parameters that will help us identify which event has just happened related to an input. So the first thing that we will have to do, first of all, let's scroll down a little bit. And if you can't seem to scroll down like endlessly, you will go to editor, editor settings, and here under text editor behavior, just enable scroll past end of file. So what we are going to do here is to check if our event, that as you can see, it's a parameter given in the signal. If our event is an input event mouse button, so it means that the event is that we are clicking somewhere what we will do is then we'll do some other uh, conditions conditions that should be true in order to detect that the click has indeed happened so first of all if event dot button index is equal to button left button left like this and now also if our if this event has actually been pressed so this would be event dot pressed equal true then if all these conditions are true it means that there has been a click on our object so for now let's do a very simple print statement 
saying object clicked. I'm sorry, here we don't really need to check if button left because as long as it is just an input even mouse button, it's going to work. So we can basically erase that. So basically, if our event is an input event related to any mouse button, we are going to print this, okay? Also, we could just write this in just one if, if we want. So it would be if event is input, event mouse button, and event dot rest equals true. So we may delete this line. Let me check here. Now let's move this over here. And there everything should be working fine. Other thing that we are going to need as we are in a 3D space, we will need a 3D camera. In order to create a 3D camera, it's super simple. Go to our main node and here on the other icon, let's just look for camera 3D over here, create. I recommend you to check this preview option. So as you can see, we can't really see the, cir the circle, the sphere, because as you can see, it is like just in the position of the circle. So we may select our camera and using the move tool, we can move it right here. Maybe then we will enable the preview. So it, it looks fine. But maybe if we move the, it up a little. Nice, a little bit more. Perfect. And now we may rotate it a little bit. So here with the rotate tool with this circle over here. Let's check again. Okay, the rotation there didn't work super good. Um, let me check. So maybe using these things, you may move. Okay, so here the red one is the one that I want to modify. Yeah, so maybe something like this. Yeah, something like this would work just fine. Now we will run the current scene. Let's wait a couple of seconds. And I'm going to press it this time three times. Okay, so I'm going to do one, two, three. Okay. And now when I go back to the game, as you can see, we have three prints because I click it three times. If you clicked the sphere four, five times, you would see six times the message has been printed. Also, our scene is quite dark. As you can see, our sphere is white and we saw and we saw it in the game. Great. That's why uh, that that is because we don't have any lights. So let's create quickly a directional light. This one. OK, and maybe if we play again there, as you can see, it looks much better. Let's click here five times. One, two, three, four, five. And if everything works fine, we should have five prints. One, two, three, four, five. Finally, I also want to create a pretty simple user interface to know how many times I have pressed my circle. OK, so in order to do this, that is super simple. Let's select our main node here. We will create a control node that is used for UIs here. Let's change it to full rect so that it fits all the screen. Let's call this thing UI. Nice. And then here on my UI, let's add over here inside of our label, uh, inside of our UI, a label, this node. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite small right now, but let's just right here in the text, uh, score. Let's do it as if it were a score, as if it were a score counter. So this would be the default one the default text, then here on the horizontal alignments and vertical alignment, let's set it to center. Now here under theme overrides, font sizes, let's make it much bigger because it is super small. So let's give it maybe something like 75. Okay, that will work. Now let's center top it using the anchors preset and with our move tool, let's move it down a little bit, something like this. Now I'm going to rename this label to score label okay like this and now let's actually change this text depending on our score let's say so we will increase our score by one every time we click our uh object so in order to do this 
on our main uh, script we need to create a variable but basically if you don't already know variables are a way of storing different data or information inside of our game so basically we want to store and know how much times we have pressed our sphere so that will be our score in order to create the variable you write bar then the name of the variable so in this case it will be score and then you assign a default value the first value so in this case score will be initially zero and then we may increase this score depending on what happens so if we are pressing our sphere we want to increase our score by one so that will be score plus equal one basically so this is telling Guido to increase one the score variable now once this is uh, set we have to modify our score label text and in order to do it let's write dollar symbol the dollar symbol is used to get some node in the hierarchy and here let's write score label now let's uh, put dot and we want to modify its text and its text is going to be equal to score like this and make sure you're leaving an empty space because if not the score would be something like this for example and we want to be it like this that's why we are leaving there an empty space and there we have to write our current score like this it's not going to work let me explain when we are modifying a text in a label in without it's gonna take strings parameter okay but it's not gonna take integers integers are basically one two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc so we have to modify this integer into a string and to do that it is super simple let's just write here str and inside here our variable that, they want, that we want to convert into a string in this case our score also here in our ui instead of making it full rect let's do it top wide okay so now when we play it as you can see we are increasing our score every time that we press in our sphere so this is a very basic tutorial about how to get started in 3D modes. Of course, there are a lot of other things that we could do here. For example, changing the sphere color to a random color every time we click. Or literally, we could expand this with different shapes, with different lights, with different UIs. But this is just a super basic example so that you can start knowing how to actually create your 3D games. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to watch more similar content. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye bye.